Yo, what is up guys? Stellboy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So, PBC have just hosted their first card on Amazon Prime. And I have to say, that is the best boxing card of the year so far, bar none. Uh, every fight in, on this card had something to offer, which culminated in a very bloody main event between Sebastian Fundora and Tim Zhu. Sebastian Fundora won the fight by a split decision. I felt he was the right winner. Ultimately, I felt he outworked Tim Zhu. But the story of this fight is the blood on display, quite frankly. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen this before, but the highlights of this fight on PBC's official YouTube channel were age-restricted by YouTube. That's how bloody this fight was. And it made for a really good watch. Not for the squeamish, I'll say, but it made for a really good watch. It was a really good main event. And yeah, for me, Tim Zhu was just outworked in this fight. I have to say, I do believe the cut was a big, big factor in this fight. Tim Zhu in this bout lost so much blood, and the cut, I believe, was like on the hairline of Tim Zhu. And you know, the blood ran down into his face, into his eyes, and yeah, his face was just a bloody mask throughout. Also, um, Sebastian Fundora uh, broke his nose by looks of it. His, his nose was leaking like a faucet. Just blood everywhere in this bout. Uh, and it's interesting as well because I never made a prediction for this fight, but I did a live stream about a week before, I think maybe maybe Monday this week I did a live stream where people were asking my opinions on Sebastian Fundora versus Tim Zhu and I said then that it was a much harder fight than Keith Furman and this fight was a banana skin for Tim Zhu. I said that on my stream and it turned out to be, uh, to be the case. Now, I wasn't picking Fundora to win but I felt he was a very live dog in this fight just given his size alone as well as his punch output, he'll give everybody trouble at 154. He's not going to win all of these fights, but he's just going to give everybody trouble because, because of his size. And that was the case here. First couple of rounds, I felt Tim Zhu was doing well. Um, he was stabbing his jab to the body of um, Sebastian Fundora, firing the straight right hand to the body as well, and he was changing levels with the right hand. He would focus on the body and then come over the top with the overhand right. He was boxing pretty effectively in the first two rounds. I felt he won those rounds, um, landing the better punches, but I believe it was towards the end of round two. Tim Zhu kind of lent in, and he caught... Sebastian Fundora's elbow. It looked accidental to me. It didn't look deliberate. It was what it was, but it caused a bad, bad cut on, on Tim Zhu, on his hairline. And credit to Tim Zhu, by the way, because he could have milked that and maybe looked for a no contest, looked for a way out, because it was a foul at, at the end of the day. Whether it was deliberate or not, it wasn't a punch that caused the cut. Tim Zhu could have easily tried to look for a way out, but he never did, and some would argue that the referee, or the whoever, should have stopped that fight and maybe let it go to a technical decision or even a no contest. You can certainly make that argument, no doubt about it, given the nature of the cut and how bad it was. Regardless, after the cut, Sebastian Fundora got back into the fight uh, at halfway. It was very close, in my opinion. I felt that um, Tim Zhu was maybe still landing the better single punches, but Fundora was just being a lot more busy. Fundora in this fight was using his jab a lot more than I'm used to seeing. And by the way, Tim Zhu's got the reputation of having a good jab. But uh, as this fight played out, Sebastian Fundora was outworking Tim Zhu with the jab. And that was a really effective shot to pile up the points. Uh, and at the end of the day, I, I, I just felt that Fundora outworked Tim Zhu. Now... Given the nature of this fight, and also the, also the fact it was entertaining and competitive, I actually think a rematch should happen. You know, the, the fact that Tim Zhu got a bad cut due to a, a foul, despite it not being deliberate, it was a foul. So, I do think Tim Zhu deserves a rematch here, personally. But the way boxing is, we'll see a fighter get destroyed in a fight, 
they'll get a rematch, but a fight like this that actually warrants a rematch, probably not going to happen. We shall see, but um, setback for Tim Zhu, I don't think I would take this as a negative per se in regards to Tim Zhu's career going forwards. I think he's been very impressive in recent years. Last night just wasn't his night, got a bad cut, affected his performance, was what it was. Um, not trying to take away from Fandora because it looked like his nose was broken. He showed toughness also. Both guys showed a real good level of toughness here and um, and fortitude. Hence why I think this fight should happen again, but it is what it is. Tim Zhu uh, suffers his first defeat of his career. Sebastian Fandora wins for WBO and WBC Super Welterweight titles. He's unified. There's rumours he's fighting Spence next, we shall see. I would rather see a Tim Zhu rematch, personally. Also on the undercard, just to make a note of it, big up to Pitbull Cruz. He knocked out Roly Romero in eight rounds to win the WBA super lightweight title. He, he ends the Roly Romero reign of terror. Roly's been holding onto that title for way too long, never deserved to hold it. And thank God for uh, Isaac Cruz for getting rid of Roly Romero. Also on the undercard, Erislandi Lara knocked out Michael Zarafa in two rounds, defending his WBA middleweight title. Good performance by Lara, despite being, what, 40 years old now? Still looks sharp, still looks powerful, and he's still the WBA middleweight champion, so he fights to see another day. Serhai Bowachuk defeated Brian Mendoza to, uh, to win the WBC interim super welterweight title. Good fight there, but Boa Shook just outworked Brian Mendoza. I have to admit, that fight surprised me a little bit. I was half expecting Mendoza to knock out Boa Shook because Boa Shook early in his career was scoring a lot of knockouts until he ran into Brandon Adams. He actually got stopped by Brandon Adams, who, you know, isn't really a big puncher. So after that, I was a, I, I, I was a little concerned about uh, Boa Shook moving forwards. But, you know, he's rebounded since then, picked up some wins, and now he's the uh, WBC interim champion at Super Welterweight. Lastly, Julio Cesar Martinez defeated Angelino Cordova. He retains his WBC flyweight title. I've not seen this fight yet, so it was a majority decision. Was it a robbery? Was it not? I don't know. I've not seen this fight yet. Um, but I will say, I'd like to see Julio Cesar Martinez step up now and either try to unify or fight a top contender. Maybe even fight Sonny Edwards. That fight could do could do some numbers. Um, but yeah, have to say, this was actually a really enjoyable card from PBC, from what I saw. I'll also say this, the levels of production on Amazon Prime were really good. I liked the commentary team. It was Mauro Ronaldo, I believe, Abner Mares and Joe Goosen. I felt they made for a good commentary team, and despite being young in the game, I really liked the um, production that Amazon Prime put forth from what I saw. But anyway, good card, uh, really enjoyable card, and you know, the main thing is, uh, the main event actually delivered, so yeah, the only thing for me, like I said, I think a rematch needs to happen, that's the only thing I'll say, but regardless, 154... Uh, there's still other fights out there for Tim Zhu. There's fights out there for Fandora. I think people have been harsh on the 154 division for too long. It's, it's given us a lot of good fights in recent years. And here we have another one. Anyway, share your thoughts below. Beanie Guy Delboy, peace.